Today we're talking about the most commonly used stick rods and, and their applications, where you might use them. Let's do it. All right, let's do a quick summary now of the most commonly used stick rods. These are clips from previous videos. So first up, the 6010, which is a fast freeze rod. It's DC only, but all position rod. Usually you use some type of whip and pause type motion here, and you get very distinct ripples because that puddle freezes so quickly with every motion of the rod. 6010 is used an awful lot for open butt root joints and you just you know usually you're using somewhere between a 30 to a 37 or 40 degree angle on the bevel and you just ram that rod in there and you're basically almost welding it from the back side you keyhole it out and basically there are a lot of techniques you can use you can set it up where you can just drag it you can do a little keyhole whip and pause Lots of ways to skin the cat. 6011 is like a cousin of a 6010, but can be used on all polarities. And it's good for doing portable work. Like I've got this little inverter machine here that will not run a 6010, but it will run a 6011. And I did a little quick repair on a friend's garage door, and it was just a ticket. You know, no, not worried about any wind. Ran it off a 115 drop cord and did a nice little job. Got his garage doors repaired. Very easy to weld downhill horizontal side to side uphill overhead doesn't matter all positions also run really nice off an ac buzz box so will the 6013 awful lot of 6013s are used on ac buzz boxes in fact i did a video a while back i compared dcen to ep to ac three different wells cut and etched all of them the, the puddle actually looked almost identical on all three wells very subtle differences no matter if i was on DCEN, DCEP, or alternating current, just a little bit, maybe a little bit more spatter on alternating current, but cut and etch test and the visual all looked very similar. Not much difference at all. Big difference when you get out of position for the different polarities. 7014 wells a lot like a 6013, puts down a little bit more metal. I kind of like it a little bit more, but it is rather a lot like the 7024 in the appearance of the puddle. Like it's just kind of hard to distinguish puddle from slag does it's not a defined crisp line like the 7018 but it does have its place not a low hydrogen rod does not need to be kept in an oven rated for all positions so a multi-pass weld like this all beads run just about the same i did a cut and etch test on this one too as you could tell i like to test things and obviously a cut and etch test just tests one cross section so you could have defects other places in the bead but what it does is just gives you information it just helps you develop a procedure helps you get confidence in what you're doing it's a really good training tool it's especially helpful when you can do it immediately after welding so you can correlate what went on with a puddle and the result here you can see how much it actually penetrated versus what it looked like 7018 electrodes are classified as low hydrogen electrodes they are the backbone of the construction industry here in the USA anyway and they're all position Overhead welds like this are no problem. The best technique I have found is just pretty much weld with the same heat, just maybe a little bit less than I would flat. Hold a tight arc. Don't get carried away with too much angle. Set the machine hot enough where when you hold a tight arc, it won't stick. Then hold a tight arc. That's the best advice for overhead welding I could give anybody. And a nice quick cut and etch test will eliminate any doubts on your settings or procedure. 7018s are sometimes required to be run using stringer beads, a limit on how wide you can go with the bead, but the weave passes are still used. It just depends on code requirements. This is a 332 7018 going uphill on a cover pass on a practice plate preparing to weld on pipe. A lot of pipe welds are still done using the weave technique. If you need practice on stringer welds or stringer beads, just padding beads on a piece of plate is some of the best practice you can get. You'll get more arc time, more practice time, less prep time, and stacking beads like this is just some of the best practice there is. The rest of this video is about welderskills.com. That is a new project I'm working on with several other instructors. I just recently posted a beginner TIG welding course on there. It's an ABC 123 course, all in sequence, starting out at setting the machine up, taking you through running a bead on steel and aluminum, then all the way to outside corner joints. Also, you're going to see several of the instructors that are at Welder Skills doing real-world type welding videos. Check it out. This new TIG course I just posted at Welder Skills takes you all the way from setting up a machine, 
even doing leak checks on the connections, what all the controls do, how to run a bead on steel, what the polarities do, what is DCEN versus AC, what does the cleaning action do, crisp arc shots, detailed explanations, and it's designed to use the minimal amount of material. After you get some DC steel welding under your belt, it takes you right to aluminum, explains exactly what AC balance is, why we weld aluminum on alternating current, techniques for learning how to feed the filler wire by padding beads. This is the first time I've ever put together an ABC 123 course designed to build motor skills and only uses the skill exercises necessary to get you to where you want to be. This course is designed for beginners, people with little or no TIG welding experience. And once you've gone through the basic TIG course, we've got instructors like Roy Crumrine to guide you through on things like where to look when you're making a weld. Do you look at the puddle? Do you look where you're going? Do you look where you've been? Roy breaks it down for you. J.D. Brewer is in local factories most every day of the week, running pipe, doing dual shield flux core on mezzanines and work platforms. J.D. is in business for himself, self-employed, so what's important to him is efficiency. How do you get a pipe joint done with high quality, but also get it done really quick? Jonathan Lewis is also a business owner, runs a business called Superior Welding out in Texas. Along with experience in fabrication and qualifying procedures, Jonathan also takes in odd job shop type work like this dirty aluminum work here. Trying to bring you real world type applications, real stuff, not always pristine, clean metal. This is Johannes from Italy. He's a very accomplished welder, but some of his specialties happen to be cylinder head repair on aluminum. If you've ever welded on cast aluminum or an aluminum head, you know that it's, it's dirty metal. It's impregnated with carbon and oil sometimes. He's got some really unique techniques for making sure that porosity doesn't rear its ugly head after final machine. I don't think there's anywhere else on the internet that you can get this particular information right here, and he's willing to share it. Brad Goodman is Deep South Dime Stacker on Instagram. He runs a business in Mississippi building dog boxes. Very accomplished welder, but he specializes in TIG welding aluminum. He's got a really unique way of explaining how to breed the puddle and tell when you're getting full penetration. This is Sam Hagen. Sam's up in Pennsylvania in farm country. Real world welding. It doesn't get much more real than welding dirty aluminum with a spool gun. But Sam breaks it down for you in plain talk. We've also got basic skill training exercises for students. The things that every student does like padding beads to build those motor skills that then translate into being able to stack beads on a multi-pass T-joint. Another one of our instructors is Matt Hayden. He teaches high school as well as college welding. He takes us through some basic exercises like padding beads with 6013, vertical uphill T-joints with 6010, multi-pass joints with 6010, 7018, dual shield flux core, all the stuff that students do pretty much across the world. If you are a welding student currently, you'll do yourself a favor and pick up a subscription. At least take the free trial and see what's up. This will help you get through welding school better and faster. We got a week free trial going on. It's very easy to sign up. Also very easy to cancel. You can use coupon code JODY25. Get 25% off your first three months. And again, if you don't like it, easy. Just cancel. No hoops to jump through to cancel.